Thanks for joining us with the Bainbri Bainbridge Island Senior Center, uh, something to talk about. And um, just uh, thank you for supporting the Senior Center. Uh, just remember us and, and your one call for all um, giving. And remember, it's only $20 a year to join the Senior Center and you get, you get to join all these wonderful programs. Today, I would like to introduce to you Dawn Bocas. And she said that not until she joined the Bainbridge Island Camera Club that she was able to capture and share nature's unique beauty and behaviors with others. Today, Dawn is going to discuss her online exhibit. But I think that the, before we get to the exhibit, we'd like to, uh, for Dawn to talk a, bit, a little bit about herself and how she got started in photography. Hi, Dawn. Hi. <laughs> Well, I want to thank the Senior Center for giving a photo club the opportunity to share our pictures since we can't do it on the ledge in the hallway anymore. And it's really nice of you to give us this opportunity. And in telling a little bit of how I got started in all this, I, um, for years I worked at the, the University of Washington in their pathology department and they had um, just acquired some electron microscopes. And in looking at things in the electron microscope, you have to take pictures of what you're seeing. And then those pictures have to be printed. And so I spent hours and hours printing thousands of pictures in the, in the chemical darkroom. And when I retired from all of that, I, it had kind of spiked my interest in photography, and I, I bought myself a nice um, uh, camera, and it was a film camera, and then I tried to learn how to do good pictures. Well, the learning curve is very slow on a, a, a print camera, or so I ended up getting somebody gave me a present of a little 1.3 megapixel point and shoot digital camera and so i took it out one day and i thought well i guess i'll try using this and i went around taking pictures and then i could take the card and put it in my computer and find out whether gee, I didn't get the exposure right on that. Then I could go back and I could redo it. So the learning curve was like instant with the digital. So that got me all excited. And I took my little 1.3 megapixel camera and I was running around all over the neighborhood taking pictures of everything. And finally, I decided that I saw an ad in the newspaper about the photo club. And I thought, well, I'm going to go and see what that's all about. And I went to one meeting and it happened to be a meeting where they were showing prints and so forth. And because in that day, in those days, we just did prints because it was kind of before the digital era. And I just took one look at that and I said, oh my God, I want to learn how to do this because this is so awesome. <laughs> And so that was kind of the beginning of my story. Uh, and I think I joined the photo club back in 2002. <laughs> and I just had my little, you know, digital camera at that time that I was using. And shortly thereafter, everyone went digital. So then there was all these really bright, sharp people in the photo club that had gotten into um, Photoshop which is the digital darkroom and so I you know they so it was so great at giving lessons and sharing it with everyone and and then also being part of the photo club it gave you an opportunity to be aware of different places you could go to get different kinds of education and everything so for those of you who have just started at the photo club wanting to learn, just take advantage of it all and and take help from people because the people in the photo club are really great about offering their help and so on and so forth. And, and you can just learn more and more very quickly. 
So anyway, I just love the photo club, and I love all the people in it, and they've just been so generous and so helpful. And, you know, here it is, you know, how many years later? <laughs> 20 mm -hmm. years later, and I'm wow. still uh, thrilled with it. Fantastic. And enjoying it. And um, as the people in the photo club know, my main interest in photography is bird photography. And so this uh, show that we have today um, is something different for me. And um, I started doing the, the fog pictures as a way of entertaining myself <laughs> during COVID. I could go out and take my camera and my dog and not even be around people. So, um, and it kept me interested and excited about things. So I would go out on mornings when they said, okay, we're going to have fog tomorrow morning. And I would go fog hunting. And it's kind of tricky because if there's fog in one place, maybe there isn't in other places. And it's, and it burns off often really fast. Mm -hmm. So I had different places I would go and so on and so forth. And anyway, this is a collection of pictures that um, some were taken before this uh, fall and, and winter. But um, anyway, this is a, a collection of pictures that I had of Bog. You so I'll go ahead. On the first one. Yeah. So do you want me to start presenting? Yes, please. All right. Let's see. Okay. And share. All righty. Let's do the first one. Well, everyone in the photo club probably recognizes this picture because it was one I took a long time ago. And it was taken on the morning when I w went over to uh, Pritchard Park with my dog to let him run, and I had taken my camera with me because it was it had been really cold the night before, and I knew it was going to be frosty. And I loved trying to take pictures of you know leaves that are or anything that was etched in ice crystals. And then when I was leaving there, and I was driving back. I got to that one place that you can pull over that's kind of at the head of uh, Eagle Harbor. And this is the scene that you see. Well, everything was etched in white. And the fog was just starting to lift. And you can barely see some of the trees. And the sun was, you know, just you know, dissipating the fog a little bit. But it was still very foggy. And I just love this scene. It's one mm -hmm. of my favorite pictures. So beautiful. Okay. Yeah, okay. Next one. Island in the fog. That was Island in the fog. Here is cattails and ghost trees. Well, this was this was taken one of the mornings that I was out looking for fog. And often the fog will settle in kind of grassy areas or um, you know, meadows, you know, where it's wide open. And the I was driving along on the road and I saw this, you know, the cattails that were right next to the road. And then off in the distance, it was practically blurred out with the um, fog. And so the trees were really very ghosty in the fog. Okay. Do you remember the location of this, Don? Um, uh, I, it was a morning that I was, I'm, I'm trying to think, I think it was on Stottlemyre Road. Oh, okay, over, yeah. And yeah. I was driving along there, yeah, I think. And a lot of these pictures are nearby. Mm -hmm. Either on the island or nearby. Yes. So I think that was on Stottlemyre Road and it was okay. very foggy off in the, in the distance, but the, weeds along the side were quite sharp. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. Here is fog in the forest. And this is, this was taken, if you're going to, uh, to Pritchard Park and you've gone past it, 
and uh, up above Pritchard Park uh, on the road, there's a place where you can look around in this gully. And I was driving by there, and the the fog was back amongst the trees, and the sun was just starting to shine in on it. And it was just this beautiful scene. So mm -hmm. I came to a screeching halt and tried mm -hmm. to find a place to park my car and try to get some pictures. Anyway, it was really, uh, really a beautiful scene. And this is the picture I was able to get. Oh, it's gorgeous. Here is Blakely Harbor. The grid. Well, I have been fascinated by this new walk, and I don't know where if everybody has taken this walk that you can walk around Blakey Harbor now since they put that bridge over. And um, I recently had my knee replaced, and it was one of the places that I could go for a walk that was not too long, and but it got me out in exercising and I noticed the bridge and so I went back there several times trying to find it on a foggy morning well this is not a really dense fog it's just light fog and fog always changes the perceptions of what you see and this was you know in the fall and the trees were quite colorful but the fog puts kind of a mute on everything and so I thought this was quite a nice picture of the bridge that they put across joining the two sides of it and then the kind of muted color of the uh, of the fall foliage and everything and I just you know kind of and everything was very very still which is often true when it's foggy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lovely. Agate Pass Bridge, wow. Well, I kept trying to time it so that I could get a foggy picture of Agate Pass, and there's a place you can drive around and get underneath it and out. And this one morning, it, and it changes so fast, you think, okay, I've got the fog, and then poof, it's gone or it's mm -hmm. disappearing. But anyway, I kind of like this picture because of the... Uh, the leaves are still yellow, so of, and everything is kind of muted in its color and softened because of the fog, but yet there's still the, uh, the yellow and the um, branches of the trees in front kind of add to the composition of it, and um, I just really like this. Yeah, the definition, and what a wonderful perspective of the Agate Pass Bridge, too. Well, at least the, they, I've, I avoided the Agate Pass Bridge recently because they had all of that stuff where the, you know, canvases and yes. paraphernalia while they were uh, repainting the bridge. So it's nice to see it naked again, so to speak. I like that. Naked. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bank of fog hovering above the ground. Well, I was driving through Big Valley. I don't know if you all know where that is, but in the, if you're um, I would go through uh, Paulsbo, then you can go take that drive through Big Valley, and it that it's kind of a valley, so it kind of holds the fog in. But this is, was starting to lift somewhat, but it, I kind of liked it looking through these trees. And then you saw that bank of fog that was just above the ground that um, kind of added to kind of the mystery of it all. Uh, okay. I love the glow of the trees in the background, too. Yeah, well, thank you, because that's what I was really kind of aiming for. I thought, well, that kind of adds to the picture is, is that the uh, yellow foliage in the background. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Dead tree and crows against a fog background. Mm -hmm. Well, I had to get some birds in here, okay. but I was down at Blakely Harbor one morning and it was really, really, really foggy. And anybody that's been down there knows about this dead tree 
And for some reason, the crows were just kind of going crazy and they were flying all over the place and they kept landing up in this tree. And, and so um, I caught this picture of, of several of them uh, up in the tree and you can see in the background how foggy it was because those trees are really not that far away. So mm -hmm. it was extremely foggy that morning. So anyway, I thought this was kind where of fun. Is that, where is that located? At the, the head of Blakey Harbor. Okay, thank you. I love how you caught two of the crows in flight. Uh, yeah, I mean, I took a lot of pictures and then some, some cooperated and I, <laughs> And I got some in flight, so oh. that made me happy. Yes. <laughs> okay. Rising sun through the dense fog. Oh, wow. Well, well, this this was amazing because this was taken right down in front of my house, and it was on a morning where it was really dense fog. And I went down on the beach, and the sun was starting to come up, but before I could even see it, it started making the fog, uh, you know, up higher, uh, kind of yellow and so forth. And then as I sat there and watched, then here, here the sun came up through this. I mean, you can tell it by the bottom how dense this fog was because it was just, you know, you almost couldn't see anything. And so I thought this was pretty amazing because you, you can't take a picture of the sun and see it <laughs> no. unless you have a filter like fog like that wow yeah that's a rare photo right there Beautiful. yeah yes uh, descending into the fog well one of my days in searching for fog for fog i was over at suquamish and was the water out uh, above the shore there was very foggy and then I was standing at the head of the walkway that went down there and I thought oh that's cool because you could almost the the uh, dock at the end almost disappears mm -hmm. um, in sight but it just kind of leads your eye into the whole thing and anyway I thought it was pretty cool very nice Chasing seagulls. Oh, my gosh. Well, this is one of my adventures when I was um, uh, doing one of my bird picture things. And I was, um, this was taken up at Hoboke Beach and, uh, outside of Mia Bay. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting, there was a huge flock of seagulls that were on the beach. And I was sitting there kind of trying to get pictures of you know, the flock of seagulls that would fly up in the air and so forth and, you know, and they weren't cooperating too much. And then all of a sudden, here comes this little kid who had been out playing in the water and he comes running up and caused all of these seagulls to take flight. And I just thought it was just a really cool picture. And, you know, the whole background is very foggy. So um, anyway, I just love this picture of the little kid, you know, running through the seagulls to make them rise up, fly away. <laughs> wow. Morning fog in Elwha River. Now I have to tell you, when I saw this picture, I looked at him yesterday, this one took my breath away. <laughs> Well, that's, that's interesting that you said that. My daughter was looking at my pictures. I had her go to the website and look at them. And she says, you know, the one that I just really was, just couldn't get over was this picture. <laughs> wow. And it was one of my days I was out looking for fog and I took a little longer adventure and, and it was, it was a beautiful day but the fog was hanging in there and oh, I saw this and I was, it was really, I kept trying to get to it 
where because I was on the road and then I was trying to find a place that I could stop that there weren't trees in front of me so that I had to try to get it I get a picture through the through the trees and I and and I was you know in a hurry because I could see the sun was burning that fog off and I just wanted it to stay because it was so pretty and I finally found a place <laughs> I didn't slide down the bank into the river, which was fortunate. <laughs> yes. So anyway, um, I'm glad you like it too, because I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Mailboxes of Big Valley. Love it. Well, I did, this is just kind of a fun picture. Yes. Because it was one of the pictures or, or scenes that I came across when I was driving along. Um, Big Valley looking for fog pictures. And as you can see, the trees in the background, they're almost obliterated by, by the fog and it's kind of affected. And I saw all these mailboxes lined up and I thought, well, this is kind of fun. So uh, I stopped and took a picture of them. And uh, it's just kind of a fun picture. It certainly is, I love it. Okay. Apple tree shrouded in fog, wow. Well, this was taken in one of my uh, favorite places to go and take pictures or look for pictures to take. But this obviously was extremely dense fog. This is here on the island. And if you um, turn off the road at Miller, Miller Bay or Miller, Miller Road, mm -hmm. and on your, as you're coming from the highway, on your left hand side is a farm. And it's all kind of farm fields and so forth. And these trees are in there that it was just almost solid fog. And you can see the sun is coming up and it, it uh, sort of, I mean, the, the trees, of course, it, it's in winter time or something because all the leaves are gone. But I just thought this was really an inter interesting picture with the, um, with the fog different levels of fog and then the, the um, sun just trying to break through and clear away the fog. Yes. Look at the gnarly branches against the softest of the fog. It's really quite stunning. Okay. Rialto Beach, sea stacks. Well, I, I did take a little trip out to Rialto Beach trying to, um, you know, uh, just to get out and about. And then um, I kind of like this picture of the sea stacks because all the fog that kind of surrounded down at the water level. And I don't know whether that fog is created by the waves crashing and spilling the uh, moisture up into the air or what. but. Anyway, if anybody that's been out to Rialto Beach, this is a familiar scene. And um, I just thought it was kind of something different to add to the collection. Yeah, okay. I like that cloud hanging there in the sky, too. Yeah. Yeah. Eagle Harbor Marina. Well, I went down to Eagle Harbor one morning when... I thought there might be some fog, and yes, there was. And it all was kind of hanging in the trees in the background. It was dissipating really fast, so I had to kind of move along quickly to try to get some pictures that that showed off the marina and the fog and that was rising up from the trees in the uh, background. Um, and and I kind of liked this picture because of the Diagonals that kind of led your eye into the into the picture. Uh, I had I had taken quite a few pictures, but you know sometimes you have to make a choice. You can't put them all in. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Farm off of Miller Road. Okay, this is that same farm, not necessarily the same trees that I was talking about. That. Um, the trees, the apple trees in the fog. And this this was really interesting this morning that I went here. 
Now, the farmhouse and those trees up along the hillside and the trees on the side, they were all, you know, muted. I mean, they are almost colorless because of the fog. And then the foreground, you can see this, the fence and the field and so forth. And I just thought the composition of this was really kind of cool with the, with the, the fences that kind of, and the curves that kind of lead your eye in. And then with the very kind of blanked out foggy background. Hmm. Right here on our own island. Wow. Disappearing into the fog. Okay, I love this one too. Oh man. <laughs> well, took this the day that we were <laughs> um, getting. A, I was getting my Christmas tree with my family, and we were at. Um, um, let's see, what is the name of this road? Um, oh. Um. Now I'm I'm forgetting it. Anyway, got our Christmas trees, and I was driving down this. This road connects up with Big Valley, and I drive down. And I went, oh my God, look at that! You know, because it just was very, very foggy, and then the road just kind of led down into the, into the fog. And I thought this was quite, quite a a, a, a neat fog scene. Yes. It's like it, there's a tunnel there, and you want to you, you want to yes. get that tunnel to see what's there in that fog. It's like, oh wow! Yeah. This is you. <laughs> it's one of those things that you see as you're driving along, and then, oops, I got to get someplace to park my car so yeah. <laughs> I can I yeah. can get out and take pictures. And uh, but anyway, I managed it. And um, anyway, I thought this was a really cool fog picture. Beautiful. Flock of shorebirds at the ocean. Well, this this picture kind of intrigues me because I was down at the um, ocean with my family, and as we always do, we got up or in the morning and we're out for a log walk on the beach. And as you can see, it was very foggy. I mean, it was just you know, I mean, the, everything was gray. Mm -hmm. And so we were you know walking along along and. And I noticed this flock of birds, you know how when you watch the, the shorebirds and they fly one direction and they're white and they fly the other direction and they're dark. And so I was trying, I had on, I didn't have, I had it on my wide angle lens rather than using my, my big lens that I use for taking pictures of birds. And I was just trying to get uh, pictures of this flock of shorebirds that were, you know, fly back and forth and back and forth. And then I got this picture that had these two people in it, which to me just kind of made the whole thing. I just, there's something sort of ethereal about this one that by including those people in it, that I just really, it really appealed to me. That's lovely. Okay. Sunrise and fog at Murden Cove. Oh, wow. Well, this is one of those mornings. I don't know whether anybody else saw it or not, but it, I, I think it was back in December. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter when it was, but I mean, we had these incredible sunrises. And I can kind of see the sunrise from my house, uh, but I don't, I'm not. I, I'm kind of off of um, on the north side of, of Skiff Point, and the sun was rising and coming up more around towards, you know, along Merton Cove. So I grabbed my camera and my dog and, <laughs> and, and kind of ran around trying to catch some of the sunrise um, along the, the um, beach there. And... <clears throat> There was still some of the glow left in the sky. Now, see, this looks out, and you can see that kind of dark line. Well, behind that is Seattle. <laughs> I mean, it is totally blanked out by the fog. And there's that set of pilings down there. So um, they always intrigued me. And they were kind of, you know, had a little bit of fog floating around them. And then the, the um, 
background, which is Seattle, was gone, but then you get a little hint of the sunrise. So I thought it was kind of a fun picture. Oh, it's like a celebration of pastel colors. Yes, yes. Oh my, yes. Elk on a cold morning. Well, this is another form of fog, you know, when we breathe out on a cold morning and then it is um, makes a sort of a cloud of fog. So I included this. I There is a herd of elk that sort of resides down at the Dosi Wallops. And they kind of intrigue me watching them. I mean, they even end up, you know, feeding right in the middle of the campground. So they're not really too afraid of people. And I was down there one morning and I, these elk were wandering around and I could see these big puffs of, of air as they breathed out into the cold uh, morning. And I thought this was kind of a fun one to add to the fog picture. It's a little different. Okay. All right. Island in the fog. This is the one we saw before. Are we back to the beginning? Yes, we're back at the beginning. That was the end. <laughs> All right. So, Don, how long have you lived on the island? I have lived on the island for, since 1965. Uh -huh. So I've been here for a long time. All right. Okay. And you've Not as long as Pat has, because Pat, Pat Egas has been here I mean, she grew up here, yeah. <laughs> went to school here. So compared to her, I'm an old, I mean, she, I'm a newcomer. <laughs> but, but I've seen a lot of changes. Yes. Oh, boy. There's a lot. Absolutely. So how long have you been with the photo club now? Um, I think I joined in 2002. Oh, okay. So I think it was, it was, it was, it wasn't right when they first started, but close thereafter. Uh-huh. Yes. And Don has won so many awards as best photographer of the year in the club. <laughs> <laughs> Probably can't count them. That's a great show. Beautiful. Yeah, Ray said beautiful photos. Yeah. He said that, um, uh, whoops, I especially like the seagulls and the elk. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was looking at the elk blowing out that steam. You know, when we're outside in the cold and we're wearing our mask. Boy, is that just condensate? <laughs> Luckily, that elk doesn't have to wear a mask. So. Well, uh, but I'm finding that because I wear, because I walk a lot. Oh. And um, it keeps my face warm. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's true. That's true. I mean, it, it's kind of nice in that way. Yeah. But it makes like a, its own weather behind the mask. <laughs> yeah. So, and uh, Paul said, fantastic crow photo. And then Bob um, said, love the sunrise and fo uh, fog photo. And uh, Bob also said, beautiful show, Don. And uh, but it, does anybody else have a question? It, the hands up or wave or? Wow. Let's see. Oh, uh, Jim. Go ahead and ask a question. Oh, you have to unmute yourself, Jim. Uh, I, Don, I, the work is just beautiful, and I, I, I think about that one of the of the front, the, the uh, sunrise uh, uh, in the fog. And if you were to, uh, you know, print that on canvas, it would be like a, a contemporary uh, painting. It's just lovely, absolutely lovely. Do do you? Uh, ever do anything commercially with your uh, with your work uh, no not really well it's but really... i hadn't i hadn't really i mean actually i usually do make prints you know myself of pictures but um since now we don't make print prints because we can just present our pictures digitally and so i haven't even tried to print that one out so well, I was thinking that if it were printed on canvas and blown up properly, it could be a phenomenon. Well, thank you. I'm, that gives me some ideas. <laughs> sure. Well, you've got the ideas. 
you know, that's that's very very nice. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. And I, you know, we the last year we missed Fourth of July coming down to the senior center looking at the exhibits. We've missed that. And I don't know if we'll be able to do it this year, but I just appreciate so much that um, Reed and the senior center is putting the photo galleries up so we can look at them at our, our time. And, and I've been sharing them with my friends and family all over the country because you guys do a great job. I, I just just always stunned about the artistic ability here on the island. It's just just wonderful. 